Well, with the news that Muppet Vision 3D in the Muppet Courtyard in Hollywood Studios would be making way for the Monsters, Inc. land, and with the Muppets moving over to take over Rock and Roller Coaster, I think Disney was hoping to appease many fans because many people are not happy about Muppet Vision 3D being removed, which many Muppets fans, I think, were dreading and thinking this was a likely thing to happen as I had figured all along that they were likely to put Monsters, Inc. in this area for a multitude of reasons. But nonetheless, the the Muppet fans were, many had written letters, people were pleading openly with Disney not to remove it, as it was the last uh, project that Jim Henson himself worked on. And we also have a statement from the Jim Henson company themselves, and what the future of Muppet Vision 3D could be, as it's possible that it could make its way back to Hollywood Studios sometime in the near future. But we're going to read through this and give some thoughts on a story here from that park place. So hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. It says here, Jim Henson Company responds to Disney destroying the last of Henson's legacy with Muppet Vision 3D. The Jim Henson Company has made an official statement in the wake of Disney announcing plans to destroy Muppet Vision 3D, the final work of found company founder and Muppet creator Jim Henson. The studio founded by Henson, which continues to bring puppet creatures and creations to life today, gave a respectful and reflective look back on the work with an eye toward the future in the post made on the company's official Instagram account. And it read, Jim Henson's final project was Muppet Vision 3D, now regarded as a true theme park classic. The company now owned and controlled by Jim's kids, said in the post. Innovation was always Jim Henson's North Star, and his trailblazing career led him to a unique challenge. A truly immersive Muppet experience where audiences are part of the happy chaos of the iconic Muppet show. Originally debuting in 1991, Muppet Vision 3D combined 3D technology with real-world practical effects alongside animatronic and live Muppet characters. The result was a -a one-of-a-kind Jim Henson experience and an unforgettable capstone to Jim's magnificent career. As we learn of the show's upcoming closure in its current form at Disney's Hollywood Studios, we look forward to Muppet Vision 3D's next act. So I don't know if they know anything or if Disney's told them anything, but they're not saying this as if Muppet Vision 3D is going to be gone forever. I mean, they say that the closing here, as they learn of the show's upcoming closure in its current form at Hollywood Studios, we look forward to its next act. So they're not wording this as if it's gone forever. Now, I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything with that themselves, but it seems like they don't think it'll be gone forever here. So it should be noted that while the Jim Henson Company still exists and still brings creations to life in the Henson Creation Shop, or cre- Creature Shop, the studio hasn't owned the rights to the Muppets since the early 90s. Disney purchased the IP from Henson shortly before his untimely death in 1990. His final project was Muppet Vision 3D, a three-dimensional multi-sensory live showcase within the iconic Muppet Theater. The Henson Company still owns the rights to Fraggle Rock and still creates characters for Sesame Street despite selling the rights to Sesame Workshop in the early 2000s. Disney will close Muppet Vision 3D sometime in the near future to make way for a Monsters, Inc. land that nobody, (laughs) that absolutely nobody asked for, bulldozing the legacy of one of the last true visionaries the world of entertainment had ever had. It will move the Muppets into a re-theme of Rock and Roller Coaster. However, this won't feature the talents of Frank Oz, the late Richard Hunt, or Henson himself. Instead, we'll get the modern Muppets, led by Matt Vogel as Kermit the Frog in a performance so bland and terrible that it has potential to unite the world for the first time ever. I, I can say I'm not a fan of the current Kermit the Frog voice. I don't think I've I've heard people online have better Kermit impersonations than currently uh, Matt Vogel's Kermit the Frog, but that's also just me. Vogel replaced Jim Henson's chosen successor, Steve Whitmere, who was fired by Disney for sticking up for Jim Henson's legacy. Since then, Vogel has given performances so heinous that Disney has kept Kermit out of the limelight entirely, focusing instead on characters like Scooter, Gonzo, and the Electric Mayhem. This, of course, is the work of Disney's swarmy, smirking head of the park. <laughs> this article's going at him. Smir- smirking head of the parks and experiences division, Josh DiMauro, a man who would pave paradise to put up a parking lot with an artificial and expensively manufactured smile on his face. A uh, fan outcry to the death of this popular lawn standing attraction was fast and furious. For Disney fans, Muppet Vision 3D represents more than just Henson's final work. It's one of the final pieces of Disney's MGM Studios, the first park created by former Disney CEO Michael Eisner during an era when Disney CEOs actually created new things instead of repurposing, repurchasing, and destroying everything within reach. True. Disney CEO Bob Iger, alongside DMRO, have been working hard to destroy everything associated with Eisner's MGM Studios over the last several years. This includes 
tearing down the streets of America and the Osborne Christmas lights for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, a themed Star Wars land that doesn't feature anything from the original trilogy or prequels. Now, to be fair, I believe during that time period, that was when Chapek was in charge of the parks, I believe. So Iger for sure. Now, I don't think a lot of, all of this is under DiMauro, but a lot of this was Chapek, I believe, and Iger. And it's really hard to know as well how much of this I've had this question, how much of this is Josh DiMauro and how much of this is Iger? Like where, where are these decisions really being made? That would be a curious thing to know. Cause we don't know. All we do know is currently Josh DiMauro is the head of the parks, you know, division. So assumingly he's okaying these at the very least, or are these, you know, coming from up top about something else that needs to happen. It's hard to know, but you know, the buck stops here as they used to say. So I suppose, unless told otherwise, we can assume that DiMauro is uh you know pushing these things to happen he also said turning the great movie ride into mickey and minnie's runaway railway uh injecting star wars sequel content in star tours turning walt disney one man's dream into a character meet great location and preview center for upcoming films ripping out the animation studio for the star wars launch bay a museum and meet and greet location that has had a large percentage of its space closed since opening that one is a bad one i mean that the animation studio there was so cool to go in there and check that out and all that stuff and launch bay is just it just sits there it's i think again you have three different star wars locations within hollywood studios that aren't connected it's just very disjointed closing disney junior live on stage and voyage of the little mermaid leaving absolutely nothing of substance for anyone in the animation courtyard closing it's a wonderful shop christmas story and turning it into a seasonal meet and greet location for santa claus Turning villains into Vogue, a, fa- a villains themed store, into a generic toy store that sells the same merchandise guests can find anywhere else. Shuttering the Muppet store, which featured sets and props from original Jim Henson productions, along with Muppets fur- uh, merchandise. Talking the, taking the Kermit the Frog hot air balloon away from the Muppet Theater. Painting over a mural of Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy on the side of the Muppet Theater. Pulling all Muppet background music out of the Muppet Courtyard in favor of the generic Grand Avenue soundtrack. Closing and gutting the Riders Stop Coffee Shop and Bakery in favor of the Baseline Tap House, which serves alcohol. I like Baseline Tap House. I mean, they do have a Starbucks in the park. For me personally, that one's not a big deal. Uh, And they say more. I mean, again, some things are going to change in a theme park. That's just kind of how theme parks and Disney parks and Universal Studios parks go. But... You know, some of these things, again, are these necessarily changes? Like, for instance, like I actually really do miss the Osborne family lights, especially around Christmas time. Uh, I have my issues with Galaxy's Edge, I think, in terms of a Star Wars land of the potential, what it could be and what they could have done. I feel like it was way below any expectations that I would have had about you have all these things you can choose from and you only choose to do it from the sequel trilogy that they were currently in production and making. Uh, but again, I'll do a separate video on my beefs with Galaxy's Edge that I'm currently working on because I have a lot of them. I, I, I think that land still, even with Star Wars being as weak as it is as a franchise, I still think you could make a great Star Wars land there that would still be a draw for people, even with Star Wars, in my opinion, being a current dumpster fire. Uh, it says, with Muppet Vision decimated, the last vestiges of MGM Studios remain the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Which makes you wonder, how is that on borrowed time? We had a, you know, we had a video last week to my Ariana Grande from Wicked was pleading with Disney not to change it, and there have been rumors out there that it would be rethemed on some level. I think it would be a massive mistake, but I think we've learned anything from Disney, especially during this current era, that really nothing is off limits. So I will, I will never say never when it comes to like, you know, changing the Tower of Terror. I don't think that they should. I think it would mess up the entire area if they did that, but they very well could. And the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, a show that sets in a large footprint that many feel is on borrowed time. That one probably is as well. And it's a great show. What's interesting to note in the Jim Henson Company official statement on Muppet Vision 3D is the last part. This is kind of what I outlined. As we learn of the show's upcoming closure in its current form at Disney's Hollywood Studios, we look forward to Muppet Vision 3D's next act. Disney had also mentioned in its official statement that it would be working to preserve the original film. Many took this to believe the company might reconstruct the attraction elsewhere in one of the many empty spaces across Disney's four theme parks. However, the more likely scenario based on historical precedent is that the company will simply rework the footage into a Disney Plus release for home viewing. 
and that really that's not enough. Now, it's possible they could put it on Disney Plus and release it to the public in some fashion. I think Muppet Vision 3D fans would probably enjoy that on some level. Now, like I said in the other video I made, I'm not like a massive Muppets fan. I grew up with the Muppets. I enjoy them, but I'm, I'm not going to claim to be a, a massive Muppets fan. And I never looked at the situation in that viewpoint. I looked at it when they announced Monsters, Inc. and I saw the concept art. I immediately said they're more than likely going to put it here because the other issue you had in the animation courtyard area was all the buildings behind there that are administrative buildings. Now, there are many people that have said that those have been cleared out and they're going to do something with those. But even if that is the case, they would have to you know, destroy a lot of that, rebuild buildings, like do a lot of extra things that would cost them more money versus the Muppet Courtyard area. And if you look at the concept art, a lot of the existing buildings that they have in that concept art are going to stand as Disney likes to do this and just retheme those buildings and then build the attraction toward the end of the street. I always felt the way that Disney currently is, this is what they were going to do because when they say expand, they don't really mean expand very much. I think what they usually mean is we're just going to retheme existing areas and buildings and attractions to something new and count it as an expansion. But I do think what they could end up doing with this. Now, I'm not saying they will because it's Disney, but what they could do is, you know, Muppets are moving over to take over Rock and Roller Coaster, which I don't think that one's going to ruffle many feathers because I don't think Aerosmith has this massive following. And I'm not saying Aerosmith is not a popular band or hasn't been in the past, but they are currently retired. They're no longer a big headlining act there. So I don't think them being replaced is going to ruffle as many feathers as Muppets. So Muppets still has you know a, a, a footprint in Hollywood Studios, which I said in my other video, I think if you're a Muppet Vision fan, I think that's a decent compromise given only the fact that that Disney was probably, no matter what, was going to put Monsters, Inc. land where Mo uh, Muppets Vision 3D is. So them doing this is them actually hearing people being upset about it. So I think on many levels with current Disney, you're probably getting more there than you would have a few years ago. But what they could do back here is they also have, which was the Lightning McQueen Racing Academy, which is where they're going to put the villain show you very well could see after that villain show runs its course, they put Muppet Vision 3D into that building and they could make a little Muppet courtyard area back there because currently there's really nothing back there. You have Rock and Roller Coaster and when that show's going back there, that was the Lightning McQueen Racing Academy. You had that there, but that was really it. So technically they could build that out a little bit more and move the Muppets area over there. Now, I'm not saying that they will. I'm saying they could. I think it would make a lot of sense. I don't think people are still going to be happy that the Muppet Courtyard and the Muppet Theater are being basically taken over by Monsters, Inc., but you could see it move over there. Maybe they replicate the fountain. Maybe they replicate some areas over here. I don't know if the Muppets are a big enough thing for them to do it. I think really what it comes down to with Disney is they look at everything through the lens of an ROI and an IP. Do they think that just simply re-theming Rock and Roller Coaster to Muppets is enough to appease them? Do they feel like they need to do it? I don't really know. It's hard to know with current Disney. I think it's possible they do that, but they are at least putting the verbiage out there, and they said something about looking for something to do with this as they digitize the movie. So they could. Not saying they will. I think they probably should, because again, that's more things for people to do. You do have the Muppets fans out there. It's a great, you know, it's a fine show. I've enjoyed Muppet Vision 3D. I can't say that we did it every time we went to Hollywood Studios, but especially on a hot day, it was a nice thing to go check out. Kids enjoyed it. It was, it was a show for all ages you could enjoy. And I think that's also the draw of Muppets, but it's just hard to say with current Disney. I honestly, probably with current Disney, they won't do it. And if they do do that, that would be a pleasant surprise. But I do think what Disney's saying and what you hear you know, from the Henson Company themselves, it does allude to it making a comeback in some way. Perhaps the most, the least you could expect would be a Disney Plus release, which I suppose would make some people happy to at least have it exist still. They could check it out at home. Still not going to be the same thing as going and see into a theme park, but I say your best case scenario at this point would be they do bring it back into this same Muppets area and perhaps make a new Muppets courtyard, a new Muppets area, and add it back there. But I suppose if you're a Muppets fan, uh, you are getting Rock and Roller Coaster rethemed, and I guess, I guess you still hold out the hope 
that something will happen with the Muppet Vision 3D movie, and it potentially could still make its way into Hollywood Studios. But either way, that's going to be it, though, for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel, as we do lots of coverage here of Universal Studios, Epic Universe, Disney World, and pop culture. And let us know in the comments, do you think that Disney will bring back Muppet Vision 3D into the parks, or do you think that it's just gone forever, or it's going to end up on Disney Plus? And until next time, we will see you in the parks.